Hey everybody, so let's talk about crate training, okay? Let's talk about the crate first. Um, you need a crate that is the proper size for your pet, but if you're getting a puppy and say it's a Great Dane puppy and you don't wanna buy multiple crates, you can get crates that have dividers in them and the, so you can make the area smaller and as small as it needs to be for the size of your puppy. You want your puppy or your adult dog to be able to stand up, turn around and lay down comfortably, okay? Um, so that's number one. I prefer the um, plastic crates because they're enclosed and I feel like dogs are much more comfortable. There's not a bunch of information, you know, from the outside world coming into them that they have to process. Uh, it helps, I, th I feel like, with storms. There's less, you know, areas for the light to get in, the lightning, and we live in Florida, so we have a lot of lightning storms. Um, and um, I just like the durability of the plastic crate as far as uh, its sturdiness. Um, so I would highly recommend you get a plastic crate. Uh, you can also, you know, go online and look them up and buy them for inexpensive. I know they're a little expensive, but pretty much everybody sells crates now. And you can check your local uh, shelters also. They might have some program where uh, they have them for chat for sale that's a little bit less expensive um, so that's an option also um, you know how do you get your dog used to being in a crate and it can be a struggle sometimes but you have to make that crate really positive and really fun and exciting and do not use it for punishment I know sometimes it might be something that you I feel like you just want to put the dog in time out and all that crap just don't do that that's a bunch of bullshit you, you need to have a safe place for your dog to go to so how do you get them used to it uh feed them in their crate uh, the, their meals their you know breakfast lunch dinner if they're little puppies you know breakfast and lunch uh breakfast and dinner whatever it is any treats any cookies go in your crate you add the cue to it and boom Give them a cookie once they get in the crate. Get them used to it. You can, uh, what I like to do is I feed them in the crate, like I said, but I leave the door open and I put the bowl in. So just their head is in there. It's very close to the door uh, in the opening of the crate. I don't want to trick my dog and be like, here, go in. Oh, wham, close the door. And that's, you know, don't want to do that. You want to build up a trustful relationship, especially with a new dog. Um, so feed them in the crate, start little by little, but you're gonna have to get them used to it straight away. You know, so the first night you get your puppy, your puppy's gonna need to spend the night in the crate. Will it whine? Maybe, maybe it won't. But if it whines, please ignore your dog. And I'm not talking about you went to sleep and three hours later, it's whining. I'm talking about when you first put your puppy in the crate, if that puppy has eliminated outside already, and you know that, has eaten and has had every possibility to do whatever it needs to do outside of that crate, you need to ignore your puppy from the crying. Because if you don't, if you yell, if you throw something at the crate, you're gonna create fear. Um, but you're reinforcing behavior, you're reinforcing and letting them know, hey, you know what? Ah, shut up, puppy. You just reinforce your puppy. And they think, oh, okay, this is good. I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep whining and crying. Just ignore them. They'll fall asleep, trust me, okay? The other thing is that you want to exercise your dogs to get them tired, you know, through training, through enrichment toys, like Kong toys or any type of food delivery toy, any puzzle toy, you want to burn off that energy that they have in their brain and in their bodies. The Kong toys are wonderful for that because it, to me it's a full body experience when I watch dogs play with them. Um, and I'll post some videos of you know, um, Rufus uh, with his Kong and also uh, with his Buster Cube. Um, but a Kong toy for inside the crate is awesome. I would prefer as a dog trainer that you feed your pet through a food delivery system like a Kong toy um, because you want them to work. And a um, tired dog is a good dog, okay? So that's how you get your dog used to, how your puppy used to the crate. Everything good happens in there. 
treats, Kong toys, food, period. Everything, everything good, everything, everything good. Ignore whining. If three hours later your puppy cries, guess what? You're getting up at two, three o'clock in the morning and you're taking your puppy outside on a leash so that you can control the area of where you want your puppy to eliminate and um, you don't want them wandering all over God's creation. You want to keep them safe. Just walk them back and forth, maybe like five or six foot area. Movement, you know, causes movement. Let them pee. Give them the treat. Yay, good puppy. You pottied outside. I like to add a cue like go potty or some people say hurry up. Whatever comes out of your mouth naturally, tell your puppy as they're eliminating and reinforce them outside. Don't wait till you come inside. If you reinforce them when you come inside, you're reinforcing them for coming inside, which of course is wonderful, but you missed your opportunity of in the moment for them eliminating outside, okay? Now, I wanna talk to you about as your puppy grows. Hey, you know what? Your puppy's growing, let's give them a little bit more room. So move that divider back, think about that. Um, also, I like crate training because it is the best preventative tool for house training accidents. Four, um, chewing prevention. House training doesn't only mean, to me, house training doesn't only mean peeing and pooping. It means preventing my puppy from chewing up walls, furniture, um, clothes, laundry, underwear, you know, whatever you can think of pens pencils i mean the list goes on because we leave shit around all the time and you know unless you're super ocd and have everything up knit tight then guess what your dog's gonna get into something but even if you are that ocd and have everything put away you can't put away your chair legs okay um so that prevention is key they don't grow out of it. I know this because I have, what do we have here? Troy is, what is Troy? Troy, Troy, Troy is about 10 years old. And guess what? Troy still steals, steals Tammy's uh, socks. Um, he still takes her sneakers. He still chews towels. Um, he'll, he'll grab it right off wherever you have it hanging up. He doesn't care. So you can't be a normal human and hang your towels up because guess who's going to take them? Troy. And guess what Troy does? Troy takes the little tiny corner and chews it. That's freaking annoying. And you don't have to have that happen. We also have all the chew marks on the walls of Troy. I didn't know Troy before, so don't hold that against me, okay, with my Troy story. I didn't know him when he was a puppy because believe me, he would have been great trained. I'm just wanting you to know that if you don't crate train, these are the things you have to look forward to with your adult dog. All right, enough about that. Um, food and water in the crate. Food is just for that 10 minute window. You put your dog food down, you know, whether it's in the Kong or in their food bowl, just put it down, give them 10 minutes to eat their food and then you take it out. You don't want to free feed your pets. If you free feed them, they're going to have much more difficult time, um, you know, holding in their urine or poop. And also, they guess what? They don't really need us because they're constantly satiated. And we need to use our treats and training to reinforce. And you want those reinforcers to have some value to them. So remember that, okay? Um, I wanna to touch a little bit on things that you can put in the crate, like dog beds, blankets. Some dogs are fine with them, some puppies are fine with them, and some puppies will tear that stuff up. So I had a dog who for almost, almost till she was a year old, she couldn't have anything in the crate. So it was just the crate bottom and there was nothing I could do about it. I felt bad for her, but she was fine. She didn't care. And guess what? She didn't chew anything up. Why? Because I didn't allow it to happen. Now, Talu grew up to being the dog who was like, I need to lay on everything soft because I'm a princess. And she never chewed any stuff or anything because I didn't create that habit. I didn't let her create a habit for herself. Um, I also wanted to talk about with the wire crates, a lot of people like to cover them. Just get a plastic crate. 
I mean, why are you covering it? You're covering it because you want that security, but your puppy is going to pull that sheet or blanket or towel in, and now you're creating a whole problem. You're teaching them to chew on stuff. There's some anxiety happening. Um, just don't, okay? Just get a plastic crate. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is long-term goals for your uh, crate training with your pets is that it's going to make your life easier. If you have to evacuate and you go into a shelter that accepts pets, guess what? Your pet's going to more than likely going to be in a separate area from you. They're going to need to be crated or maybe they have kennels in there. Whatever the situation is, you're probably not going to be with your pet. You want your pet to be safe and secure and not anxious because they're not right there. So you need to set your dog up to be successful. So think long-term, think about your dog's entire future, all right? Um, what else, what else? Oh, newspapers and pee pads. Listen, I understand that's like the way we were taught a million years ago, okay? That's really old school to do. I know they sell all the pee pads and, you know, in the stores and they have the attractant on it. it it's not, recommend it. I don't recommend it at all. If you're somebody who lives, say you live in a high rise, maybe you have mobility issues, whatever it is, and you want to have some type of elimination system in your house, get a sod or fake grass system. They sell them on Amazon, you know, probably all the pet stores, just type it in fake grass um, elimination system for dogs or house training, grass for dogs. And another reason why this is good, not only if you live, you know, in a high rise on the 50th floor and you have a puppy and by the time you get downstairs, it's all gonna be over. Um, another reason that is good is, again, if, say you have to evacuate, it would be very cool to be able to have your dog be able to just eliminate in comfort. Or if you're staying home, in a storm or whatever and you can't go outside because the wind or the rain you can have that system that grass system in your house if that's something that you choose to do so that is the only time i would ever recommend using any type of elimination system so but put that on the side for right now let's say the ultimate goal is to get your dog outside get them outside just start doing it Go get some jingle bells, hang them off of a string, you know, yarn or twine or whatever, right at the door. If you have a slider door, get a thumbtack and thumbtack that string and have it have that bell, you know, on the molding right next to it, just thumbtack it. And have the bell down low enough so that your dog, you know, whatever your dog's height is, okay? So if their dog's in, it's pretty low. If they're a Great Dane puppy, maybe a little higher than that, okay? What you do is you get your dog out of the crate and you say, come on, let's go potty, let's go potty, or outside, outside, and run over to the door with the bell and ring the bell and get your puppy involved and pick up one of their paws and hit it, hit the bell with it and rub their nose on the, on the uh, bell so they're engaged in ringing it, okay? Boom, take them outside, you have your treats, they eliminate, you treat them, you play with them, bring them inside you play some more you you know do a little bit of training and in the middle of it go outside and you know get your dog to pee and poop again remember movement causes movement so mid play or mid training take them outside bring them in maybe play a little bit more and then it's quiet time then it's time to go back in your crate and here's your kong with yummy delicious things inside that i know you love and you'll chew on it and you'll go to sleep and that'll be that for that time now getting to the back to the bell when you're ringing the bell and the door's opening and they're going outside to eliminate they make the association that the bell sound means the door is going to open and we're going out and i'm going to eliminate so it's a whole series of events that they chain together um, and then the ultimate goal is for when later on down the line, when you're a little bit more comfortable, maybe you want to trust them a little bit, maybe when they're six months old, I don't know, five months old, maybe, I don't think so, but we'll see. 
um, you'll have to test it with your particular dog. You want to give them a little bit more freedom and then maybe you'll hear them ring that bell ever so slightly and you run over to the door and you're like, yeah, let's go outside, outside and go outside, ring the bell some more, go outside, okay? And your dogs may start ringing the bell a lot just to, because they can. And I know it can be a pain, but that's later down the line and you'll take them out anyway because you need to. And you know, maybe they're like a year old and they go over and they start ringing the bell. Just take the bell off the, off the door. You know, they're already house strained or whatnot. But so this is for your puppy, okay? You wanna set them up to be successful. Follow these simple steps and you will house train your puppy in days i promise you it'll be days you need to be consistent you need to have the right equipment and you will be successful so if you have any questions or comments leave them below message me you can dm me uh follow me on tiktok it's at dog on positive and i'm on uh, facebook under maria ryan and of course here dog on positive so let's keep it going. Let's, let's, I'm, I'm curious because I do get a lot of questions about this. So I don't know, don't be shy, ask me a question and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Okay, thanks, bye.